Hello, I'm Caroline McGee and I'm Head of Operations here at Impact Arts. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you today to our virtual Creative Pathways Showcase event. A huge congratulations to our 48 participants who have worked so incredibly hard over the past 12 weeks to produce some of the amazing artwork that you're going to see today. They've also been working on their creative and employability skills. They've gained a qualification and some of them moving on to fantastic progressions, including college, stage three employability courses and part time employment. A special thank you to our delivery team who have supported these young people throughout their journey and to our partners and funders without whom this wouldn't be possible. Um, a special thank you to everybody watching. Thank you for taking time out of your busy days to help us celebrate our young people and the incredible progress that they've made. Our next round of Creative Pathways starts on the 19th of April and we'd love to hear from you if you're interested in finding out more information. Please email us at hello at impactarts.co.uk or visit our website www.impactarts.co.uk for more information. Please enjoy. Is, uh, usually a digital representation of yourself. Yeah, it's just kind of how you want to be seen. The one that I'm making is just, I looked around my room and I saw a plant pot and it's the kind of similar one to that. So I guess that's also like personality because that's something that's in my room. I don't know, I just really like sunflowers, but like I think avatars could like show other people how you feel inside rather than just what they're seeing on the outside. Impact Arts Creative Pathways has helped me with social skills and my confidence, as well as helped me grow as a person. Through Impact Arts, I've been able to draw, develop ideas, make 3D artwork and paint every day. And I'm so grateful for the mindset that I now have and this level of motivation to work in my art. Seeing everyone develop their work and confidence has inspired me to keep going. And I'm truly thankful that I got to meet so many creative people and I'm really glad that we can keep in contact as everyone moves on. And it's strange to think that when we started, I was honestly so scared to meet anyone and actually speak on Zoom. And here I am now not wanting it to end. I think it's easier to hide behind the phone, whereas in real life you can't hide. I'm just now kind of like wearing a mask because then people don't recognise you the same. I find it harder in real life. A lot of the time I don't like speaking out in case what I'm saying is wrong, but I'm online, it's not like much of a big deal. I think it's a lot easier to be confident online because in games and stuff, you can like have this like really cool character that you have. It makes me feel better. because I feel like it's a good release of whatever's like on my mind. I could just like transfer it onto paper um, and it's quite satisfying and therapeutic, I think. Encouragement. When you get feedback from other people, it makes you feel a bit better because you're not hearing it from like the same people. You're not hearing it from all different people that are letting you know how they feel about your work. Obviously there's the barrier because we're on Zoom, so we're not as comfortable, well, I feel like I wasn't as comfortable talking and stuff. So it's good that we've got the group to kind of communicate like that. And it's a bit more personal as well. Like it shows that people are doing it because they want to, not because they have to. When I get comments and stuff in my work that I post, it makes me want to do it more. And the funnest part of the group is learning about everyone's different art styles.
Did anybody ever go into Glasgow about five o'clock at night? Thank oh my you. goodness. You know that thing that you girls will see guys and girls see on television now where the starlings are all pushing round about at a certain time, five o'clock it usually is. In the city of Glasgow they had a, a company called, what was it, Cameron's Commandos. Oh God, that must have been the 60s, 70s, early 70s. His job was drive around Glasgow and sound horns to frighten these birds away off the, the buildings. There were thousands of them. They're not there now. They've just disappeared. And how would it be like if someone came along with an air horn whenever he sat down on a bench? Exactly. Like, eh. that, that was his job. He was paid to do it. remember I think it's important to give your opinion in a group discussion because then when the discussion's finished, you know that you've put your point across and you don't regret not saying something. It's important to talk to a group with other opinions because it's important to know that your opinion isn't the only one and it's good to get other perspectives on things. It's something that and it strives people to do more art because you know, a lot of people get insecure about their art and I just feel like there should be more people just commenting on people's art and just giving them ideas and ways to go about doing different things or improving and stuff. So I don't know, it's just something that I always try to do. I've learned a lot about individual art and what personally like what motivates me and how, what I can do to, to help my own art. I've learned lots about art in different mediums. I've also like um, upgraded my conversation skills and I feel more confident, especially working with Zoom, uh, talking and giving other people support. Yeah, another thing that I've learned the things I've never tried. I never tried painting, clay, they never really done photography as such, didn't it? What I've been doing in my eco village on Minecraft is building my my own eco village and creating all different buildings and making them out of like recyclable plastic. open-minded is just looking at other people's perspective like knowing what other people think and not just having your own opinion. I just think it's important to understand that not everyone's like you and to just respect everyone even if they aren't like you. Just not to make assumptions about people just by the way they look. Changing your perspective if it was something before and being open to you know having it changed.
relaxing, I'd say, uh, when you're outside and it gets, gets you away from everything. People have layers and once you break through the first layer they show who they really are. It's different levels of someone's personality and then when you look at it all together it makes like a whole, it's like harmonious colours and it's just all a part of them. Um, I suppose it's like don't judge a book by its cover as well and that same kind of thing where from the outside it's different. It just shows that things have inner beauty even if they don't seem like it on the outside. The colours I use complemented each other and just made sure they blend together well. So I think that can be said for like someone's personality as well, that all these parts and they all kind of complement each other. I wouldn't consider myself brave, so it's nice to see that written down. Just things that you wouldn't think about yourself, but other people just from what they perceive you to be like. Creative, respectful, gentle and imaginative and drawing. Compassionate, thoughtful, kind and patient and kind-hearted. Inventive, confident, making things, modelling in 3D printers and problem solving. We can all be really proud of what, what we've achieved together, which is really cool. Um, and I think what we've got is going to be an amazing brand for the Youth Health Service and it's going to really stand out and hopefully it's going to encourage more young people to come along and get the support that they need because that's really what it's about. At the end of the day, 
is trying to make this really attractive and eye-catching and um, in the hope that it will help young people feel able to come and access the service and get the, the help and the support that they need. So thank you so much.